Hello everyone, in today's video we are going to make this drag and shoot game in Unity. If you're new here, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button below. Here I set up a simple scene with four walls, which have box colliders attached to them. Let's begin by dragging our ball sprite into the scene, which will create a new ball game object in the scene. Let's rename it ball. Next, let's add a circle collider 2D component to it to enable collision detection. And then also add a rigid body 2D component to it to apply physics to the ball. Let's set its gravity to 3. Now hit play. Yes, gravity and collision are working fine on the ball. But to add real ball physics to the ball, first, let's create a physics material 2D asset in the assets. To create that, click on Create, then select the 2D menu, and then select Physics Material 2D. Now select the asset that we created and set its friction to 0.1 and bounciness to 0.6. We can change these values later on if we want to. Now drag this asset to the Physics Material field of the ball's rigid body component. Hit Play! Congratulations! You just made a ball bounce! Now set Collision Detection to Continue and Interpolate Mode to Interpolate for Smoothness. Now let's create an empty game object and reset its transform. And rename it to Drag Controller. Now let's create a new c -sharp script and rename it to Drag Controller. Then open it. Let's create two public variables. One of type lime renderer and one of type rigid body 2D. Now drag our script onto the drag controller object. The line render component will show us our drag, and the rigid body component will store our ball's rigid body to apply drag force to it. Now you can see we have two fields. Let's drag our ball object's rigid body component to the RB field. Now let's add a linear renderer component to the drag controller object. Now let's change some of its settings to get reliable results. You can follow my settings or experiment with some of its fields to get a better understanding of the line renderer. Now drag that line renderer to the line field. Let's create a float variable as the drag limit and set its default value to 3. If we want, we can modify it through the inspector. Next, Create one more float variable for force and set its default value to 10. Create one more variable of type camera and another variable of type boo as is dragging. Now in the start method, let's initiate everything once. First, let's set the line start and end positions as vector 3.0 and by default, our line will be disabled. I forgot to set the line position count to 2. It is necessary to set the line renderer's position count before adding or removing points. Now in the update method, first let's see for the mouse button press input and whether dragging or not. If the mouse button is pressed but dragging is not set to true, then start the drag. Let's first create a drag start method. Now in the drag start method, the first set is dragging to true. And set the line's zero position to the current mouse position. Here we are going to use mouse position multiple times, so I created this simple property that simply returns the mouse position in world space. Now let's add another if statement. If dragging is true, that means the player has already started dragging, so let's create another method called drag. Now inside this method, let's first take a line start position and the mouse's current positions in two separate variables. Okay, so before doing anything, let's set the line's second position as the current mouse position and enable the line in the drag start method. Now let's add the last if statement. Here we check if the mouse is released and dragging is true, which means we need to stop dragging now, so let's create our last method, which is the drag end method. Here, let's set dragging to false and disable the line. Yup! 
you can see now that our drag is perfectly visualized in the game. This can be good to go with, but as we want to add a drag limit, let's make some changes to the drag method. First, let's create a vector to store the distance from our start and end positions. Next, let's add a check here if the magnitude of the distance is less than the drag limit. Then only update the line's end position to the mouse's current position. Otherwise, here we simply created a vector by getting the normalized value of the distance vector, multiplying it with the drag limit, and then adding it to the line's start position. It can be hard to understand at first, but it's simply setting the maximum limit position, so let's set this position to the line's second position. Oh! I think we made some mistakes. Here we mistakenly updated the first position. Let's change this index to 1. Now you can see that no matter how long I drag, it limits the drag to a certain limit. We can also change this limit from here to get a suitable result. Now, in the drag in method, let's add some force to the ball. First, let's copy this code and paste it here. And here, just replace this part, instead of mouse position, let's get the line second position because it will be in limit. Let's create a variable as the final force. Here, simply multiply the force to add variable with the distance variable. Distance is also a direction. Now let's add this force to the ball and set the force mode to impulse because we want an immediate force. Force is applied to the ball, but we want to add the force in the opposite direction. Here, simply add a menu sign before force so it will add the force in drag's negative direction. Now it's done. After adding some particle effects and a basket, this is how it turned out. I appreciate that you are watching this until end. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments section and I will respond. If you enjoy our videos, please subscribe to our channel for more excellent content like this and please tell your friends about it as well. See you in the next video, stay happy, and have a nice day!